Shut up and sit down. Well, hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Master the NEC, where we talk about the National Electrical Code and all things electrically related. On today's episode, I want to talk a little bit about risk and reward and the ability to take a risk because of the reward and understanding that risk and reward is all proportional to your situation in life. If you're starting out early as an apprentice or somebody that's thinking, I want to get into an electrical career, and you're thinking, what do I have to do? What are the risks? Well, the risks are very low, but the reward can be very high because you don't have, usually at that point, you might not have a family, you don't have a lot of expenses, and you can really dive in and start learning this trade. And there's good money to be had working with contractors as an apprentice, as a helper, as you start to gain that hands-on experience. However, if you're older in life and you've got a family and you've got a lot of, 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 of burdens on you, then it's a lot higher risk to jump into this industry. However, again, risk being the, uh, the, the negative side of positive reward means that we all have to take a risk in life in order to see success. Now, I've had many businesses through my career, electrical contracting businesses, consulting businesses, obviously the academies that I have, and there's been risks all along the way. Um, in my electrical businesses, again, investing in people, investing in trucks and equipment, all of this was a risk, but the vision was that I was going to get some type of reward, and I would never achieve that if I didn't take the risk. So everybody has to look at risk and reward. However, certain successes that we have in life are born out of us taking those types of risks. Now remember, you're going to encounter, uh, encounter haters people that are negative, people that want to hold you down, people that live in that negative realm. They're going to be around you, maybe even in your family, maybe in forums that you're on, maybe out in, in job sites, maybe even in the corporate world that you work in. And you have to put blinders on and remember, haters love haters. There's people that want to bring you down. Typically, they're not successful. They are living in hate because they're doing something that they dislike and they would terribly hate to see you do something that you enjoy. And so they're always going to be trying to drag you down. So you have to ignore them. You have to keep moving forward. Now, this industry, electrical industry, has so many facets to be successful in. And while there is risk associated with a lot of the areas of this industry when it comes to moving out and being an entrepreneur, owning your own company, hiring people, wondering if you're going to have work to keep them busy, all these type of things, estimating whether or not you're going to get the job, are you hinging on it, are you too high, there's risks and there's rewards. And as you get better, as you get more proficient, the ratio to risk and reward starts to change a little bit. It, the risk goes down and the rewards go up. Now, if you're early on in your career and you're an apprentice, you're a helper, you're uh, learning the trade, then your risk is really low. You don't have a lot of burdens, but you need to put in the time. You need to learn your craft. So we start out by learning the National Electrical Code. We start out by learning the hands-on, and you put what we call time in. Now, most all exams around the country require you to put some time in. And so once you put this amount of time in, it's supposed to be a given that you're going to start learning the trade. You're going to learn the little ins and outs of the trade. Then you start building up your code knowledge because every entry exam into a certain level of skilled trade requires an exam. They want to test your minimum proficiency. Uh, and again, the National Electrical Code is a minimum safety standard. Now look, along your journey, whether or not you're an apprentice or a helper or even a journeyman, and you want to move up in your career, you have to have the fundamentals. Now, whether it's residential, commercial, industrial, whether or not you know grounding and bonding, which kind of ties all those things together as a minimum safety standard, uh, whether or not you know the core fundamentals of electricity, all those things make your job easier. And if you learn those core fundamentals, your risks start going down and the rewards start going up. So what we put together is the Electrician's Academy. And you're going to see this grow over the next couple months. 
Now, right there, the Electrician's Academy, electricalinstructor.com, what you're going to see is we have courses that are available for residential, commercial, industrial, grounding and bonding, which is critical for you to understand no matter whether you're a residential, commercial, or an industrial electrician, as well as we're going to have Electricity 101 courses. We want you to understand the foundation of the electrical industry. Now, no building exists without a good foundation. No trade exists without a good foundation. So build that foundation in that program, and then you put on the skilled trades as you move up. Look, project managers, leaders, owners all take risk, and they have to assess the risk versus the reward. They didn't get to where they are without putting things at risk. So if you're early on in your career and you really want to reduce the learning curve, then you're going to have to take a risk. You're going to have to take a leap. You're going to have to believe in something. We believe in these programs because they take residential and they break it down room by room by room so that you learn all the fundamentals in how you lay out circuits so that when you're out in the field, you can put into practice what you're learning as you're going through the school. Now, this is great because a lot of times, sadly, in the field, people with experience don't want to train people with less experience. Either they feel threatened or they just feel like that's not their responsibility. I'm here to tell you it is their responsibility to pass on the trade, the skilled trade. But you know what? There is a big learning curve. And in order to reduce that learning curve, that's why we put the courses together at the Electrician's Academy. So again, if you're an apprentice or journeyman and you're a residential and you want to learn commercial, we have a course that takes you through every aspect that you need to really understand the fundamentals so that when it comes up on the job, you're not surprised. You look right at your project manager or the supervisor and go, I got this. Again, risk and reward, investing in yourself. All right. Now, another thing. As you start to learn these things, you'll then start to add more things. You're going to learn business management. You're going to learn estimating. You're going to learn how to do social media presentations, understanding marketing. All these things are building onto your knowledge base. But you have to start with the core. Start with the foundation of electrical, the trade. Get proficient in your skills. Then when you get to the level where you feel it's second nature, start building on that. That's when you start to see, well, should I take this business class? Should I take this leadership class? Should I take this uh, accounting class? All of those things are going to be available at the Electrician's Academy as we evolve together. That's why we created it. It is something that we hope will be a place for you to go. And you will be able to learn things like estimating and all this type of stuff as we grow the academy. But right now, right now, the Electrician Academy is focused on those core skills. Residential, commercial, industrial, grounding and bonding to tie it all together. And we also are fundamentally going to be really focusing on Electricity 101, the fundamentals that we all should know. Now, let's do a little talk about risk and reward. I have a video I want to show you that really explains why it's so important that you have to take a risk. Because if you don't take risks, there is no possibility for reward. So what we're going to do is we're going to check out this video and uh, hopefully get something out of it. I'm going to watch it as well. I was in a congressional hearing. Um, and uh, one of the Congress, uh, Congresswomen stood up and said, Dr. Diamandis, um, aren't you, in fact, going to cause people to kill themselves as they go after this X Prize? And I was really taken aback by, by the question. And I, I thought for a moment, and I answered her in the following way. I said, um, 500 years ago, thousands of people gave their lives as they crossed the Atlantic to open up this great nation. You know, 200 years ago, thousands gave their lives again to you know, as they crossed the Great Plains to open up the West. And you're telling me on the verge of the greatest human exploration ever, people shouldn't risk their lives? That's un-American. 
and she didn't follow up with any further questions. <laughs> but it's true, you know, if you stop and you think about it, the greatest, you know, to, to have true breakthroughs require taking risk. You know, I think we're killing ourselves in this country by our inability to take risk. You know, the day before something is truly a breakthrough, it's a crazy idea. If it's not a crazy idea, then it's a small incremental improvement. It's not a true breakthrough. So how do, where do we incentivize really risky stuff? It used to be in the government programs. I mean, yeah. for God's sakes, you know, saying in 1961 that we're going to the moon after we, after we had not even sent anybody to orbit yet, we had just put Alan Shepard up on a suborbital flight. The medical journals, if you go back and you read the late 50s and the early 60s, well, late 50s, didn't know how the human body physiology would react to space. Would the brain work in the you know, Van Allen belt, because it's basically an electromagnetic machine? Um, could you even swallow in zero gravity? Now, you know, the fact of the matter, anybody who's ever watched someone drink a beer while standing on their head would be able to know that you can <laughs> swallow in zero G. But, um, <laughs> but they ask these questions. And, and so this, the audaciousness of, of this, and I, I want to share a metric with all of you to really empower you in something. The average age of the engineers in 1961 who designed the Apollo program, invented the propulsion, the navigation and guidance, the structures, the rendezvous and docking system, the average age was 26. The average age of the engineers who designed the Apollo program was 26 years old because there was no one there to tell them what couldn't be done. It was literally at the peak of their creativity these people were given a clean sheet and said, go and make this happen. You have a presidential mandate, and they did. The same average age as, you know, who created the dot-com revolution. So to the faculty in the room, next time someone in their mid-20s comes to you with a crazy idea, listen. To the students in the room, if you have a crazy idea and someone tells you it's a crazy idea, well, maybe it is for them. Go and do it. So literally, there's a way of thinking that we have to take risk. Wow, so at the end of the day, the takeaway should be don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything. Be willing to take risks. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career. I remember back when I was 17, 16 years old, I was taking night classes on the National Electrical Code while all of my friends were out partying. And for me, it was to build my career. And that's what I wanted to do. And my family supported it. And it set the tone on what I would do for the rest of my life. And so don't let anybody tell you you can't achieve success. Don't let the haters get into your head. Again, haters breed hate. Typically, it's because they're not successful. Typically, the ones that come out and, and thumbs down or the ones that go into forums and will bash you or tell you you can't do anything, they're, they're haters because they hate themselves. And they don't want to see anybody around them be successful. And don't let them get into your head. You can be a success. You can be a star journeyman, a star helper, move on to be a, a star master electrician. You can move on to be a top project manager. You can move on to be an owner. But you have to invest in yourself. You have to be able to take a risk and realize at the end of that risk, there is great reward. And I think you'll be a success. So if you want more information on our products, visit us over at electricalinstructor.com. Of course, we have all of our other stuff available over at masterthenec.com. But check it out. I believe in you. We'd love to see you in our programs. Until next time, stay safe. God bless. Shut up and sit down.